Hello guys, welcome back to another chapter in my Grand CNC adventure. In this video, I'll be going over how I mold a 3D profile on my Shapeoko. The project I selected was a relief map of the island of Oahu, which I downloaded off Thingiverse. I was looking to see how well the Shapeoko could handle fine details as well as 3D milling. For those of you that don't know, Thingiverse is a repository of digital models run by the guys over at MakerBot. Although it's geared towards 3D printing, you can still download the objects from Thingiverse and mill them with the right software. The majority of the files on the site come in an STL format, which is about as ubiquitous in the 3D design world as PDFs are for documents. In choosing a 3D model to machine, you'll have to keep in mind that 3-axis CNC's have very specific geometric constraints. You can't mill anything with overhangs, and that unfortunately rules out a lot of the cooler models on Thingiverse. I specifically searched for relief maps because I knew those would be machinable, but other CNC-friendly searches might include terms like logo, pendant, or emblem. Once you've downloaded the 3D model of your choosing, you'll need to generate G-code. There are many ways you can go about doing this, but I used MeshCam out of convenience. MeshCam is a paid G-code generation program with useful features like compatibility with a wide range of 3D formats and a milling wizard that simplifies the process of generating G-code. It comes with a 15-day demo, so if you're curious, queue up some interesting projects and give it a spin. All I had to do for this project was import my relief map and set up the cutting parameters. MeshCam has two cutting modes, roughing and finishing. In the roughing phase, you're just trying to remove material as fast as possible without worrying about the small features. Here, you can plug in whatever you consider to be a fast feed rate and cutting depth. MeshCam will then set up a reasonably efficient path to hog out material. In the finishing phase, you're taking slow, shallow passes to resolve finer details. MeshCam will methodically march across the surface of your workpiece, trimming away material as needed. The horizontal and or vertical step over with each pass should be very small so you don't notice the curvature of the cutter in the finished product. Grab a good book, plug in some noise isolating headphones, zero your machine, and hit send. In hindsight, I could have picked a faster feed rate for the finishing pass, which was the slowest part of this operation. Because the end mills were moving so little material in this stage and the surface features aren't very tall, the spindle would have had no problem keeping up with double the feed rate, especially in a soft wood like pine. Because you're starting from a uniform block of material and smoothing everything out with a ball end mill, you don't have a lot of striations or layering that you would get in 3D printing. Plus, the finished piece is a lot more durable. Anyway, that's 3D milling on the Shapeoko 2. I highly recommend you grab some STLs and try it out for yourself. If you don't have a workflow capable of handling it, I can recommend downloading a demo of MeshCam and trying it out. And just to be fair, like I said in my last video, I'll also be trying out other CAM programs in the sub $300 range in the coming weeks. If you have any first-hand experience with other programs and want to chime in, please leave a comment down below or post a reply on the Shapeoko forum thread for this video. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all in a week or two with my rehabilitated Hexnut Slingshot.